up, everybody? Merry Christmas, happy holidays, whatever it is you celebrate. Welcome to episode 199 of Hops Geek News, a podcast that talks about comic books, movies, TV shows, and of course, we feature a beer of the week. Now, if this is your first time listening, hey, subscribe, like, share, put it on for your dog, put it on the old folks' home for your grandma. I don't care what it is that you have to do. Help the podcast grow. We're doing lots of cool things. You can find us anywhere by Hops Geek News, whether it's social media, whether it's on our episodes. And of course, patreon.com slash hops geek news is where you can support the show episodes early comic bundles. We have some other things that we've been talking about doing in the works. Come hang out with us on discord where we talk about a lot of cool shit. And this episode is about the one, the only elf. It's the 20th anniversary of elf. So we're going to be talking about elves today. Right Hands down. Band. One of the, the most iconic Christmas movies to have come out in the the 2000s in the last 20 years, of course. So we'll be doing that. Typically, we talk about beer. We talk about what we messed up on, what we're reading or watching, some news, and then we dive into our main topic. So my beer of the week comes from 10 minutes down the road from my house, Aleworks Brewing Company. Fun, old-fashioned family Christmas. It is a Christmas ale brewed with spices. It's 8%. It's got a nice knitted sweater if you're on your YouTube. It's cool can art. Ooh, you know, I was supposed cute. to drink this last week. Lauren told me to pick this one, but I didn't pick this one. That's on me. So I'm drinking it now. It's no one a, ever it's, listens to me. I know. It's a winter warmer. It's dark. It's got a lot of good spice I love flavor. Winter warmer. Uh, I like Ale Works, man. They do seasonal beers really well. They do a really good pumpkin beer. They did a really good Christmas beer. There's two locations within 10 minutes of my house. They even had a Taylor Swift theme party this past weekend for her birthday. Love them. Oh, her uh, birthday's December 13th. Why do I know that? I'm not even a Swifty. So proud of you. So proud of you. That's what I'm drinking. What are you drinking? You can't not know things. I'm actually drinking a Hardywood. Ooh, Virginia so Beers from, Unite. Uh, I found a holiday variety pack at My Total Wine down here in Orlando, which in the past, the only time I've had Hardywood, somebody sent it to me. So a lot of the stuff in the pack though looks very, very sweet. Like I see milk stout and I'm always hesitant because like they're well, it's their GBS series this time of year. That's all really sweet. And I very much so like sweet stouts, but only when they're like barrel aged. No, I'm not slipping around and I can see myself now. Um, so this I went with the gingerbread because gingerbread always has those different spices and it's not overly sweet. So this is an imperial porter with ginger, vanilla, cinnamon, and honey at 9.2%. Uh this is Richmond, Virginia. It says to pour slowly into a stem glass. Instead, I poured very fast into this glass. It is not a stem glass because it's my elf glass. And it almost overflowed, but it did not. It is very good. Uh, I am a little, well, I'm going to drink the rest of them Christmas Day so I can share them with other people. But I'm going to go ahead and guess Dude, already lucky, this is going to be my favorite beer. Because Christmas is going to drink beer with me. So that sucks. Dude, come on down here. Everybody at my Christmas drinks beer. I would love to because I actually have Christmas pancakes set aside for Christmas. I'm going to bring down. I'm going to bring Sierra Christmas, Nevada down. I have two Christmas pancakes. Yeah, I've got those ready to go down. Uh, I kind of thought about drinking those while the kids open their stockings. Dead ass though. Like, oh, dude, if I like opened up a beer at 8 a.m. at my in-law's house, they'd fucking have a heart attack right then and there. I guarantee it. Do you know what my dad's like saying is? The drinks are flowing like glue around here. <laughs> <laughs> which was I like wish. my grandfather saying. So it's like, if he's been at my house for maybe 20 minutes and I haven't offered him a drink yet because I'm dealing with other shit, he'll say that he'll just stand in the kitchen and be like, the drinks are flowing like brew. I'm like, I know dad, I got it. I want to drink as bad as you do. <laughs> when I go to my parents' house next week, it's acceptable to drink as early as possible, but not at my in-laws house, unfortunately, where I'll mm. be out on Christmas. Uh, but I'm still going to bring Christmas themed beers down and, I'm going to the Packers game on Sunday. You know, I'm going to go drink out in Charlotte, go to Sycamore Brewing and all that good stuff. But Sycamore, that's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be fun. And I I love these two breweries. So like Aleworks I talked about, but Hardywood does really good seasonal beers. And they're breweries. Micah was the first one to introduce us, right? Yeah, Micah sent us those. And I'm really glad I got to visit their breweries. They just had their GBS festival last week. Uh, but they have two locations, West Richmond, uh, kind of outside of Richmond. They have three, I think. One in Charlottesville and two in Richmond. And I, I like their spots. They're very popular. Like if you don't, if there's an event going on, you will not find parking. You will not get in. It's very popular, but they do really good beers. So Nice. 
shout out to them. Uh, Lauren, why don't you take us into what we've looked into? Because DT helped us a little bit because I didn't know what this was. Okay. So last week we had our Christmas special and DT described Christmas ornaments as tchotchkes. Neither of us really knew what that was. And Tim, here's your Stanley cameo, told us to Google it and basically made a comment like you're going to laugh. So if you Google it, they're just small objects that are decorative rather than functional, which perfectly describes a Christmas ornament. However, it is also a pretty girl or a woman. Walking down the street, pretty woman. That's so fucked up. So they're just decorative and not functional. That's, you know, it's kind of crazy. Yikes. That's that's kind of sad. No, but I had no idea what that was. So Me I feel, neither. I feel enlightened. Thank we you. learn a lot on this show. Thank you, DT. No, that's what you find out in our Discord. Because shout out Thank to, you, like, yeah, Stacey, to DT and to Tim. DT, Tim. Like, everybody in our Discord really sheds light on the shit that we have no idea about. Yeah, you and don't know what you don't know. I'm telling you, right? It's awesome. So going into what we've been reading or watching, what have you been reading or watching lately? So as far as reading, I feel like we're going to be talking about a lot about what we have recently read on next week's episode. So I'm not really going to go into too much of that. Uh, so as far as um, actually, as far as reading, I did finish the good omens book. I absolutely loved Ooh, it. Did you? I did. I wish I had read it before I watched the show though, because it is very, very spot on, but I am still glad I read it. It's a very quick, easy read. It's, I don't know why, but it felt like a quick, easy read. And if you've seen the show, then you're just reading everything in that person's voice and you're seeing them. Mm -hmm. And the characters that were cast are, for the most part, very similar to their descriptions. I think the one was like the witch finder guy who is, uh, you know, he's from Better Call Saul. He's in Smallville. Like he's taller than he should be. But I mean, I feel like they nailed everything else. I did take a little offense to the one woman who is the uh, lady of the night psychic. They described her as middle-aged, which I am, and she is not middle-aged in the show. I feel like she is much older than middle-aged, but I felt like she was described as somebody of my age. So outside of that, I enjoyed the book. That's tough. I watched, obviously, Elf. I watched Leave the World Behind. Have you heard of that? I have. It's a Sandra Bullock movie. I've heard it ends very abrupt. Julia Roberts. Oh, it's Julia Roberts. Sorry. They yeah. both are the same person in my head. It's and Julia Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke. And yes. um, the super cute dude from uh, House of Cards. It's and basically um, Luke Cage. Like uh, uh, Cobra. No. Blade. Blade. Oh, yeah. Uh, Marshall Ali. Yes. There you go. I heard it ends very abruptly. And so a lot of people weren't happy. It doesn't. It doesn't. So here what was funny was Ski text Erica and I you guys need to watch this movie. And I was like, well, he doesn't usually give Eric and I very specific movie recommendations. And I said it to Josh and Josh is like, well, ski recommends it because ski thinks the best movie ever is, is Halloween. (laughs) We have to watch it immediately. So Josh immediately put it on and we watched it. And I didn't know why he recommended it until the very last scene. And it made me hysterically laugh. And I don't want to say why it is. If you've seen the movie and you want to know why that was funny, you can reach out. If you know, Erica and I, then you probably and you've seen the movie, then you probably get it. But I will say the highlight of the movie was there was a scene with Julia Roberts and the guy from House of Cards and Luke Cage, who is now Blade, and they danced to the boner song. Do you know the boner song? What's the boner song? The step back, you're dancing kind of close. I feel a little poke coming through on you. No. I lost my mind laughing in that song because I always... That's not the name of the song. That's just always what I called it. And they were like dancing to the song in this movie. Hmm. Anyways, the movie's on Netflix. What happens is basically one second, everything's fine. They're at an Airbnb. And then little things are happening that kind of show you like the world is under or not the world. America is under attack. So that's the premise of the movie. They have two kids that are kind of teenage age. And one of the kids is obsessed with the show Friends, which is funny because Julia Roberts is Susie Underpants. And the only other thing I watched was It's a Wonderful Knife. <gasps> Did you like it? It was all right. Just I didn't right. love it. I liked it better it than It's a Wonderful Life. Dude, I really enjoyed Justin Long, and he was playing it like the pastor He's from Texas. Chicklet teeth. Yeah, well, he was purposely playing it like Joel Olstein. Ah. That's why he was supposed to be playing it like that. I thought it was cl- I like this because it, it reminds me of the other Amazon original that came out this year that both did time travel. And... uh I thought it was clever. I like a good time travel slasher film. And that's what both of these were. And Joel McHale was in it. And just, mm-hmm. just 
get like a different spin on It's a Wonderful Life. I, I like this Which movie. Is, that movie sucks. This was definitely a better version of that movie. The one thing that when the movie first started, that one brother and sister duo were the world's worst actors. And I was like, why are they in a movie with Justin Long and Joel, Joel McHale? Yeah. But fortunately, they got better. It, it it was good. I liked it. I watched that too. I'll throw that in there. It's worth I, watching. We paid $5 to watch it. I had it on Plex. I'll be honest with you. Plex is the, just assume I'm watching movies on Plex all the time. Uh, I watched that. I watched the Eras tour. Of course. Come on now. I was baking cookies. I was watching the Eras tour and little did I know that everything after that point was downhill sharply, whether it's work or my green Bay Packers, just being pieces of shit on the football field. So it was sharply declined. Uh, I watched this movie called round and round. Uh, it's one I suggested to you because it was a Hallmark movie. However, it did not feel like a Hallmark movie. It something Hallmark does really well is the Jewish Hallmark movies. All right. Because two years in a row, they have absolutely slapped out of the park. Is DJ Tanner okay with that? Uh, I've, maybe. But uh, so this is very much a Groundhog's Day movie and it was filled ah. they they go to a comic book shop and the one guy owns a comic book shop they reference dick donner uh superman they reference all sorts of pop culture references and it was actually a legitimately really good movie it might have been my favorite hallmark movie that i've ever watched that's how good it was <laughs> that's saying something and i've watched a bunch this year and every year uh, i've watched some others like there's mr and mistletoe lane i watched there was a oh, that's one, that one's a classic. Or something. Oh yeah, that uh, one's great. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, just know that round and round is worth. It does not feel like a Hallmark movie. It is worth watching. Give it a try. They play and around and around you go. No, stop. No. Scrub the ground. It was a legit good movie. Uh, I did watch Candy Cane Lane. Oh, what'd you think? I will never watch it again. <laughs> it was not good. I hate. <laughs> The I leading evil it. girl. The leading evil girl is literally Melissa McCarthy's twin sister. In my She's head. from the night before. She She's Seth also Rogen's in Workaholics. Wife. Oh, I liked her in uh, Britney Runs a Marathon. I watched that one. She's. I like her. She's also in um, Godmothered. Which oh yeah, 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 almost made my underrated Christmas list. But like she's awful. She is. But she's the villain. Watch. She's supposed to be awful. But she was. Oh, it was bad. It was so bad. Oh, see, I didn't hate it. But I, I there were jokes I genuinely enjoyed. <sighs> Eddie Murphy was Eddie Murphy. It, was, it wasn't bad. And there were some parts with like the little figures that were cute. And mm -hmm. I thought the story overall was cute. Like, you know, you have to find the, you know, 12 days. And I thought there were some clever parts about how the 12 days of Christmas repeats. Mm -hmm. That was really clever. And Santa Claus was cool. But uh, I like that the I, singing people were um, pe pentatonics. pentatonics. Yeah. Yeah. We that love pentatonics in this house. We are big yeah. pentatonics fans, but I never need to watch it again. <laughs> That's fair. Never. Uh, we watched like Jingle Jangle, just a bunch of Christmas movies, man. Elf, watch that. I watched Die Hard last night. Multiple times. Does that count? Uh, it's true. I watched Die Hard while baking cookies last night. Of course. Classic. Did Hans then, Gruber fall off Nakatomi Tower? He did. That he is did. officially Christmas. But it was only 10 o'clock on the dot that he did this. So two hours short of midnight. And of course, I have read some things on nerd initiatives such as Kill Your Darlings, Cap Wolf. I've done Darth Vader issue number 41. Go check those out. And there, there's some cool stuff coming down that I can't talk about live. But you'll see if oh, you pay attention on secrecy. If you've watched me on Tuesdays, there's a certain publisher that I have been granted access to that you will be seeing me talk about every Tuesday. So nerdinitiative.com, follow us there. Aside from that, that's it. I haven't done anything else special. Nothing crazy. I'm going to go see Aquaman 2 probably the day after recording this. I will report back in a couple weeks. Uh, I can tell you right <laughs> now it's probably not going to be good, but... Yeah, Speaking I'll be back. Of, yeah, let's dive into some news. <laughs> let's go into some, some news. news. Let's, uh, what do you got? Aqu Aquaman news? Yes, Aquaman the Lost Kingdom did not even receive a red carpet premiere. There was no after party. Aquaman's premiere kind of came and went. It's a very sad, bitter, sad end 
to what was the DC extended universe that started with so much hope with Man of Steel. And it just, which is crazy because Aquaman 1 was a billion dollar movie. It was like the most popular DC movie. And the fact that they're like just ignoring it, it was. It was a billion really? dollar movie. I thought Wonder Woman was the best movie no. of the well, DC okay. universe. Yes, but Aquaman 1 legit made over a billion dollars. Wow. And I did not fact, see that movie in theaters. It's it's not even going to get like a happy goodbye. It's just like, yep, here it is. Bye. Funny enough, I watched that movie in increments on a Norwegian cruise while getting ready each night. It's Aquaman 1's a good movie. Aquaman 2, I will report back, like I said, but... I love that people... What movie was it where uh, Aquaman... Was it Flash? Where Aquaman's dad showed up and people like gasped in the theater because yeah. it was Boba Fett. Like yeah. he was in the last one, guys. And not for nothing, but uh, this kind of relates, but Warner Brothers is in talks with merging with Paramount Plus to like merge stuff. So like... Merge. Uh, they should get a big I, sign above their bed that just. I don't even merge. subscribe to Warner, you know, HBO Max because it, there's just no point. They're always pulling stuff off. They're always. French shell- joke. It's just fucking garbage. Anyways, happy a lot news. of HBO stuff has been showing up on Netflix lately. Yeah, because HBO is just a mess. It's just a mess. It, it's garbage. Uh, but happier news. There's some MegaCon announcements. River Song will be there. Jason Lee, Charlie from Supernatural, who is Felicia Day. <laughs> The main evil witch from Ahsoka, I forget her name. Uh, if they announce the girl who played Shin Hati, <laughs> oof, mm, okay, eh, three p.m. No, no, I just wrote her down. I have her. Anthony Daniels will be there. Colin Kelly, Jackson Lansing, Gina Davis, and Susan Sarandon will be there. Anna Lee Inosanto, she played Morgan Elsbeth and Mando, and in Ahsoka. Huh, crazy. Well, Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen will both be there on Saturday. And uh, that's kind of some MegaCon announcements. Like I said, we're going to be there. And uh, that's kind of like a light news day from my end. What uh, was some news that you got over here? Good Omen season three has been confirmed. This is very exciting. I'm very excited. If you saw Good Omen season two, you're probably very excited as well. Curb Your Enthusiasm, the very last season will be out February 4th on HBO Max. I know Tim's going to be watching. I know Josh and I are going to be watching. A uh, flower and garden festival at Epcot begins February 28th, which is personally my favorite festival there. Beetlejuice has finished shooting. So the new Tim Burton one, I'm hoping it comes out next Halloween. Obviously, there's no release dates yet. If you've been following the news with Mark Shepard, who is Crowley from Supernatural, yeah. had a terrible heart attack, died multiple times. They brought him back because he's the king of hell and he is not going anywhere. He is home. He is doing well. He has gone to a cardiologist checkup. And he is looking forward to going to more creation events next year. So very glad he's okay. And I love seeing the outpouring love of other people who are from Supernatural. So Mark Shepard has been in Good Omens and like, not, no, I'm sorry, not Good Omens, Doom Patrol, Doctor Who, Supernatural. He's been in so many different random holes of geek culture. So many people know him and all of this stuff that he's been going through. He's just putting hashtag SPN family. And you're just seeing the Supernatural cast come out in droves and just show their support. Um, My last bit of news is Jonathan Majors was found guilty of assault and harassment. And upon the verdict, Marvel has dropped him as King. That is all we know. Uh, Well, I think they did say that they weren't going to do the King future movies and it would just be Avengers. I don't even know what we're on. Avengers. So Avengers King dynasty has been split into like secret wars, two parts. Now Avengers five or whatever it is, it's been split into two parts. Officially. They announced this. It was like 15 minutes after the verdict was announced that they announced for them for at least waiting though. And not abruptly firing. Like they did like Disney did that with Johnny Depp where they were like, peace out before any. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, they had this written up for months at this point. Oh yeah. They probably had press releases on both sides ready to go. Everything that kind of came out from the trial, I caught snippets. I, I wasn't really tuned in, to be honest, but it didn't look no, good for my boy here. And honestly, this might be like top two, not two, fumbling the bag of the century because the dude is a really good actor. He's just a shitty human being. Like, it's not hard to not beat a woman, guys. It's really not. It's if, if you really have 
issues to that degree. Like number one, you're rich. Go see a therapist. Number two, go hit a fucking punching bag. You were in Creed. Like, I don't know what to tell you. That's, that's kind of all I'm going to say on that end. Do you have anything before we go into our main topic? No, I thought he was fantastic as King. I don't feel like King's story is done, but you know, I think they should it is be what cast, it is. But we'll I do think happens. they should be cast too, but you know, if they don't, Marvel's there's nothing probably I've has been three backup plans right now. Outside of Secret Invasion, there's nothing I've been very disappointed in with the MCU. So that's fair. Well, let's go into Elf, the movie that launched the career <laughs> of Zoe Deschanel, Will Ferrell, okay. John Favreau. Didn't launch. Will Ferrell had already recorded old school and he okay. was already, we'll, we'll well, talk come about on. he was season. already breaking windows with his head. We'll talk about, I guess that season. was more so Chris Kattan. No, I'm telling you right now it as a leading whoa, man, whoa, this whoa, movie whoa. launched his career as a leading man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Well, we'll catch you guys in just a moment talking about elf. Welcome back. Like I said, elf. Now, listen, I'm just going to tell you straight, straight up. Will Ferrell was not considered for this movie. It was actually Chris Farley. They wanted Chris Farley, but Chris Farley passed away. They pushed this movie off. They pushed it off. And what about finally, Jim Carrey? Nope. They, they finally went ahead and got Will Ferrell. And not to mention, Will Ferrell was not the leading man. Yes, he was in things like old school, but he was not the leading man that he was after this. After this movie, he does things such as Step Brothers. He does the other guys. And this really launched his career as far as a leading com, you know, comedic person. Step Brothers is fantastic. And also like John Favreau, he wasn't known as like this big time actor or director at this point. But after this movie, he, he was known on... as a big time actor. He was well, so money. Okay, he that's know right. He was, he was like he was in like he was, swingers and right. stuff like but that. But he was yeah. also in Friends. He was. he was super duper rich in Friends. Um, he was in quite a few things, but obviously he's not the John Favreau we know today. No, he went on to do Elf. Or Elf. He created, he, like, he was he part Elf. of creating he Grogu. Did, he, he started Iron, Iron Man. Man. Yes, yeah. he did Star Wars. This man Iron Man. has pivotally changed everybody who's listening to this podcast and our lives. Exactly. He, 100%. So it stars Will Ferrell as, you know, Buddy the Elf, James Can, Bob Han. Newhart, Han, Khan, whatever, Mary Steenbergen. Who Mary? Nobody knows how to say her name. No, but you know Mary also was in Step Brothers, and Back to the Future Three. Yep. Ed Asner, Zoe Deschanel, which Zoe Deschanel was only twenty one when she filmed this, and Will Ferrell was thirty five. Yikes! Uh, this also spawned my crush on Zoe Deschanel, who went on to do New Girl. Will Ferrell has looked the same fucking age since he did this movie. I don't know. He looks older now. He does look older now, but there was a time period from 2003 until like 2020 where he did not age at all. It's like the Steve Martin effect. Steve Martin, I feel like just looked old because his hair was white. He turned his hair went white at 30 and he hasn't aged since. Right. Good but for him. He looks great now for his age. He does. He does. <laughs> now, this movie goes without saying, but raised as an oversized elf, Buddy travels from the North Pole to New York City to meet his biological father, Walter Hobbs, who doesn't even know he exists. And he's also in desperate need of some Christmas. He's spirit. on the naughty list. So why don't you kick us off with some fun facts? So Peter Billings Billingsley, AKA Ralphie from a Christmas story is the elf Ming Ming who tells buddy. He's not a cotton headed ninny muggins <laughs> young buddy. Who's sitting on Papa Elf's laugh. Lap is actually Max Favre, John Favre's son. And here is an extra fun fact. He was also the kid wearing the Iron Man mask at the expo in Iron Man 2, which many people believe was actually Peter Parker behind that mask. What? And I think somebody did come out and say that it was, but I, you know, I still think it's a fan theory. Um, Here's your four degrees of supernatural. The male room guy who claims he's 26 and looks 45 was actually born in 1957, making him 46 when he filmed this. He was not 26. He also plays Hansel in an episode of Supernatural. Matt has not gotten there yet, but all I will say is Taylor Swift music is played in that episode. Fuck yeah, I'm in. Several minor traffic accidents occurred when Will Ferrell walked through the Lincoln Tunnel in his costume because people were so surprised and distracted from their driving to see okay. him wearing an elf outfit. But 
the way they shot these parts was like they literally attached a camera and did stuff and they shot it. So these are all real, real, real reactions. Yeah. Well, and when we went to New York over, I guess it was actually about exactly 10 years ago, we drove through the Lincoln Tunnel to go to uh, Philadelphia. And so in and as we're driving through it, I'm like, I've and we went this. through the Lincoln Tunnel. I've done this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in the photo album, it says, and then we went through the Lincoln Tunnel, and then it goes to Philadelphia. All right. Do you want to talk about the how this is funny? Yes. Now, to get the reaction from the Jack in the Box toys that you know, do 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 John Favreau used a remote control to trigger those toys and get startled reactions from Will Ferrell. The scene when Buddy eats different candies and pastries with the spaghetti noodles had to be shot twice because Will Ferrell vomited the first time. Every time I see it, like when I was younger, I was like, oh, this looks delicious. But as I get older, I'm legit like this is making me nauseous. Oh, that see, this movie of- came out when I was 20. So I was never like. Holy shit. <laughs> I was 13. <laughs> this was Kaylee's first Christmas. Oh no, you weren't there. Oh, I guess yeah, 2003. You I, guess I was so, 13. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, this came out the same year as Bad Santa. When you say it did, it did. And when you say it that way, it seems like we're because now it's like, oh, dude, you're only 40. I'm 33. It doesn't seem like that's far apart. Well, but and when we're you, both like, raising kids around the same yeah, age. Like, yeah. But when you sit there and say it came out when I was 20, it came out when I was 13. It's like, wow. Yeah. It really makes it seem like what? Those are the moments when I'm glad we have people like, you know, Ken and Tom come on this show. (laughs) Yeah. Anyways, the cotton balls that Buddy was eating is actually cotton candy. Really gross. Haven't died. It was. It was like, and it was also kind of cute. Like one of my favorite things I like to quote is, uh, I'm a human raised by humans. (laughs) I think I said that today. Uh, I was raised by Papa Elf. I'm I'm an elf. I'm a human raised by elves. Oh, I'm a human. I mean, this is honestly a movie you quote all year. It is. It's not even just a Christmas time. It's not. Now, Wanda Sykes. I mean. That's fun to say. I feel bad for everybody named Francisco. That's fun to say. Uh, What's a Christmas gram? I want one. You're so pretty. You should be on a Christmas card. You just made my day. And speaking of making our day, Wanda Sykes was originally slated to play the Gimbal's manager. However, she backed out at the last minute. She was replaced by Faison Love, who insisted on still wearing the name tag made for Sykes, which is why his tag inexplicably says Wanda. He's hilarious in this movie. Six! And she, ribbon I girls, honey. that more than anything else. That's impossible. I'll walk around and whenever somebody at work tells me they can't do something, I'll just be like, six! And just, like, there's somebody gunning for my job. All right. The the new call sign is Santa's got a new sleigh. It's, like, it's a little too good. I remember back in the day listening to Howard Stern on. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Serious. Mm-hmm. And uh, Artie one year, he was like, oh, I saw they're going to do an elf marathon. Can't wait to get that check. So he was clearly was getting royalties from it. Yeah. So, I mean, and he's not in it along at all. He's hardly in it. He's in it for yeah. like two major scenes. It's. The initial one and then the Santa one. I guess threes. Like, How'd you like to be dead? <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the security guards is actually the brother of Will Ferrell. And to make the North Pole look more authentic, forced perspective was used when, pos- when possible instead of CGI. So that's one of the really good things they do is up in the North Pole, they make it seem like Buddy is so much taller than everybody else, which is really clever. And some of the best because scenes... Because he was a human raised by elves. Well, yeah. Like, some of the best scenes... Like, obviously, there's one that's going around, especially now. It's the hockey sequence that was cut out, where he's just, like, fucking chucking bucks. But one of the oh, best pictures... he has pictures, a blue elf costume on, because yeah. there was some potential legalities there. Well, the the whole legality bit was uh, they were very close to you know the Rudolph the Rudolph movie. But one of my favorite things is there's a picture of Buddy the Elf dunking on all the other elves, and I just <laughs> I just love that so much. I love it, love it, love it so so much. And also, many of the sets were actually built twice. One was much larger for the actors playing elves. And one was slightly smaller for the normal sized actors in the scene where Ed Asner as Santa dresses his elves. He's standing on a platform on a smaller version of the set. The elves were standing on another platform far behind him. 
Lighting was used to blend the two images together. The magic of movies. Oh, and shout out to Ed Asner. He passed not long ago, maybe yeah, a year ago. Yeah, I think ago. so, yeah. Um, so Buddy's dad's place is also Dana's place from Ghostbusters. And that was pretty cool. What? Um, Reese Lamarck did the famous burp. He's also the voice of Brain. So this is something my kids regularly ask me, what are we going to do today? And I always say, same thing we do every day. Try to take over the world. Matt, maybe. Too oh, Pinky and the Brain. No, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Carrie and I, Carrie and I are all about that. Carrie actually quotes right. that a lot. My kids get eerie. I literally said this to them to Logan yesterday because they get bored and they're like, what am I supposed to do without my iPad? I go, same thing you do every day. Try to take. I don't know. Play and with the 50 million fucking toys that are in your toy right? box. And then Logan's always like, oh, mom, that's going to take longer than one day. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the burp. <laughs> Will Ferrell played. So this fun fact. I had never heard this before, and I've watched like behind the scenes making as of the elf. So when I saw this fun fact, I had to double check it, and I found an interview to confirm it. So Will Ferrell actually played Santa at a mall years ago when he was quote unquote a struggling actor, and Chris Kattan was actually his elf. Um, it was at a mall really? in Pasadena, and they were hired to walk around and greet kids. But what's funnier is the story he told on the night show. Yeah, a hundred percent. Matt's banging his head. That was yep. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Did you break the window again? Dad's gonna. <laughs> I kill love how me. he looks so like upset too. That's gonna kill us. Oh, I've been to many a wedding where all of a sudden I feel like I'm in the middle where two of the friends start going like this. <laughs> um, so they were at this mall in Pasadena, and they're talking to these little kids, and uh, they're doing the whole elf and Santa thing, and they look up and they realize the dad's Kevin Costner. And then the kids are playing on some sort of statue of like a dog or something. And Chris Kattan goes, it almost looks like they're dancing with wolves. Ah, and that's okay. But like for real, if you haven't seen Night of the Roxbury, come on. Come yeah. on. You need. Oh, to my that. gosh. Yeah. But I guess Kevin Costner was trying to keep a low pro- profile and they weren't big and famous then. And so he grabbed his kids and left. It's hilarious. But if you can YouTube that interview with. Will Ferrell, will he, where he tells that story, and it's pretty fucking funny. So uh, Favreau voiced the uh, narwhal. Hey, oh, buddy. I didn't know that. I hope you find your dad. So Pre Vizsla and the most famous narwhal of all are voiced by the same person. So the baby buddy that Favreau had initially cast was twin boys with blonde curly hair, which makes way more sense because... yeah. Usually kids go are blonde, born blonde and then get dark. They don't they're not born dark and then go blonde. So that really didn't make sense. But here's why. Because the two little blonde headed boys could not perform. Instead of smiling and crawling, they cried relentlessly. So they brought in triplet girls who are brunette and they performed. Huh. Dudes, boys are awful. What are you gonna do? Now so Yeah, go ahead. No, you're good. I thought you're passing to me. I'm sorry. Uh, while Gimbel's is no longer around, it used to be a competitor of Macy's, which is clearly what they were pretending Gimbel's was in this. Somebody's clearly gunning for my job. They did it good. Well, too dun, good. Dun, dun. Now, the final day of Elf's New York shooting was pared down from a massive crew to just three people. It's star, it's director, and one cameraman. Together, this trio traveled around the city looking for mischief for Buddy to get into with random passerbyers turned into background extras. This included him leapfrogging across the pedestrian's walk, happily accepting flyers, getting his shoes shined, all of which made it into the movie's cheerful montage. This includes the Santa in the red sweatsuit that was not actually Santa. And I love yeah, that. Could you imagine being that guy? Or like unknowingly know what's going on because at this point you probably don't know who Will Ferrell is, and so you're like, "What are they doing?" But he was big on in, on SNL too, though. Oh, I I honestly, there's two big collections that we used to watch as teenagers all the time. It was Will Ferrell and it was Adam Sandler SNL. Like we would watch their their best of back when they had mm-hmm. the best of X, and those were two, and so we knew him. Right. But, but you were also 13. So for me, being a 20 year old mother at the time, I knew Will Ferrell when this movie that's came true. out. And uh, I, don't, they, I think Old School came out after. 
it no, was came out right around the before same time. old schools before okay because there was hesitancy with the casting of will ferrell because yeah. he was now known as frank the tank frank the tank frank, yeah so yeah, i know that there yeah. was some some issues with that it might have been something filmed and released was conflicted and if you want to know more there is a netflix special that talks about it the movies that made us they do one on elf and uh, yeah you're right they which were this actually brings up another point. Did you know that they actually filmed a lot of stuff in the aban- like a lot of the elf stuff in an abandoned mental asylum in Vancouver? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, they did that because they finished shooting up? in Vancouver and they did all sorts of cool stuff. Okay, if they film stuff in an abandoned hospital in Vancouver, there's got to be a correlation to Supernatural there. And uh, speaking of old school, so New Line took a chance. They had never done a family film before. So New Line took... Uh, they tried to edit it in a way that made it seem like more adult, but like John Favreau and crew objected to it pretty hard, which is why we got the version of elf that we got. Cause new line was trying to make it more adult, like which obviously would have bombed and not have been the absolute banger that it is today. And a couple last things it made 173 million in domestic box office, 220 million worldwide, which honestly doesn't seem like a lot by today's standards, but it was the seventh highest grossing domestic film that year. And Rotten what Tomatoes gives it, like, I oh, know. I mean, oh. Bad Santa. I don't Nemo. Know. Yeah, I, I don't even remember, honestly. There was, Probably oh, that's 13. right. Finding Nemo was that year. And I only know that because I saw it pregnant. Yeah, there were, there was some other stuff. Like, there were some good movies that came out that year. I just don't remember, but. It's without a doubt like one of the best Christmas movies ever made. Like Love Actually came out that year as well. So there's a few like Christmas movies. That came yeah, out but Love it. Actually is. Yeah. Eh, eh, I don't care for Love Actually. I can't find. So Elf actually came out two years before Supernatural came out. There's got to be some overlapping thing. But it, mm-hmm. as far as my initial Google search, I'm not doing I great. do own this DVD. Do you? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. I own this. Actually, if you look on our Instagram, there's a picture of my DVD from last week's episode. Most kids out there today are like, what's a DVD? Well, folks, it's digital media that lets us actually keep the movie versus being at the whim of Warner Brothers. So we went to go watch Elf and I went on to HBO Max, which I is not personally my own. And it said too many people were watching. And I said, don't worry, guys, I got this. And I got the DVD out. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Did you ever see, did you watch this movie in theaters? I didn't because I just had a baby and we decided to watch Bad Santa instead. But I did buy it immediately. I don't actually remember when I watched this movie because it wasn't in theaters that I saw this. I don't remember. I think it was a couple of years after that I first watched it, maybe. I think mine was probably 2004. What's funny, though, is I don't remember my first initial watch, but I do remember. I mentioned John last week, too, which is kind of funny because I'm going to mention John again. When I got a Christmas tree. In my apartment years ago when Keely was a baby, it was probably a year after Elf came out and he was supposed to help me and I had put on Elf and he did not help me at all because he got sucked into Elf. And then when I told his sister, I go, yeah, he didn't help me at all. She's like, he goes, she put on Elf. What was I supposed to do? (laughs) Yeah, I don't remember. Like I was 13, so I wasn't big into movies yet. We saw movies, but it wasn't to the degree that it is now. Um, I think the only movie I saw when I was 13 was Clueless. That's fair. Yeah, I, I I own it though, and I know Ian. I remember him dressing. I've seen a picture of him dressed as like Buddy the Elf, which is amazing. Yes, and usually we all switch our Facebook pictures to a picture of Ian on his birthday. It's amazing. But yeah, not this year, but no, I I love this. No, movie, man, like yeah, I don't know it? why. Probably because we were with him on his birthday. This it was also year. Taylor Swift's birthday. Come on, put some respect on the Queen. But if you go to my cover photo, there is a picture of my face on Ian's elf body. Yes. Yes. What do you think? Is this a top tier Christmas movie to you every year? Oh yeah. It's it. it, I mean, to me it is by with, when you're talking about the movies, as far as Christmas that you have to watch, it's elf Mm -hmm. by far. It's, it's changed. And in my, in my opinion, this was the last great Christmas movie to actually come out. I mean, I can't watch Santa flying through New York City without getting... I feel like that was the first time you ever saw Santa's sled fly, and it looked real. You better watch out. You better not cry. 
But you're not pout. I'm telling you why. Come on, sing it. I am singing. No, you're not. It's just going to turn into me quoting. Santa like Claus. Yeah, it's funny. So James Conn was actually a client of my dad's. And it was what? funny. We went we went to Santa breakfast recently and that song was being played. And I looked at my dad and I know he's, he passed recently. And I said to my dad, I go, the end of this one song always makes me think of your client because if he hadn't started singing it, Santa would have crashed landed himself. That's right. He did pass. And that's crazy that your dad uh, worked with him in some capacity. Uh, yeah. I mean, this whole movie, there's so many good Sunny moments. Sonny Corleone. Like the, the fact that they're down in the, you know, the mail room and old dude is like, I'm 26. I got nothing to show for it. It's like, Whoa, I did not look like that when I was 26. That blew my mind because obviously the first time I saw it, I was 20. So I didn't think anything of it. Were so they then, fucking with us at that point? Yes, they were. Okay, they were. Thank you. And that's why, like, as I got older, I was like, there's no way he's 26. And then I ended up Googling it. And I guess they went back and watched it. And they're like, this guy's not 26. They're like, yeah, that makes it funny. Cause like, I'm 26 okay, year old. What God. am I doing with my life? I just got a prison. Like I'm in the flow. I gotta get out. Right. He's no, like, he yeah, didn't get out of prison. The flow. He's on work release. That's right. That's right. It's like, I gotta get out of the flow. That's what got me here in the first place. I was, but I will say, flow. so he's in this before he's in supernatural. Cause supernatural hasn't even come out at this point. His episode is one of my favorites. Interesting. Okay. I think it's season 10. I, uh, there was a funny Got moment that like Carrie texted him. me. So the, there was a meme going around that the head coach, the Philadelphia Eagles, Nick Sirianni, got his start in Elf, and they tried to pretend like the kid was Nick Sirianni. And she was like, is this real? I was like, no. Like, what? Not in a million years. The kid is some child actor, not the coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Like, Which kid were they trying to pretend it was? His little brother. Who's little? Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, they tried to say you can like, easily Google that. I know it was funny. She was like, Is this real? I was like, Carrie, no, what the fuck? No, <laughs> like, what? No, no, <laughs> it uh. was, but there were some really good moments, like the snowball scene. I love that scene. That was such a beautiful, like, that is a fun scene. That was when they really started to bond. This again, like, I had such a crush on Zoe de Chanel from this movie through like New Girl. That I was like, oh, that's my dream girl right really there. Really can't stay. Yeah, she has a so, beautiful singing voice. Have you heard the story? Like a lot of people call it the the date rape song. Yeah, it isn't like a canceled song or something like that. Right, but the origin behind it is actually kind of the opposite because when it came out, it was like the idea of a woman staying at a man's house was so taboo. Like you can't stay there. What are the neighbors going to think? What is this person going to think? So it was like, oh well, if you know what's in this drink, if she's drunk, maybe she's allowed to stay because it was a story of like a woman who wanted to stay. Jeez, that's dark. And so, well, this was the time. So it was like a woman who actually wanted to stay. And so the man is and her are pretending to have excuses so she can stay and that it's okay to stay because, you know, it's it's scary out there. But it's been turned into because if you listen to it today, it 100 percent sounds like a fucking date rape song. What's in this drink? But like she's not drunk. She's pretending to be drunk so that it's okay to not go home. That's crazy. I didn't know that. I just knew it was one of those like canceled songs. That's all I knew. Well, I think with a lot of things, some things should 100% be canceled and some things just need context. Also, like canceled really just means we're holding you accountable for shitty actions. Just right. FYI, and if you can but... explain your shitty actions like this song, which is honestly one of my favorite Christmas songs. Well, there's two versions that I really like of it. One, if you watch Glee, the um, two dudes that are a couple. Kurt yeah. and I don't blame. Uh, they do an adorable version, just the two of them. And I, there's also a version with one of the guys from his, he's not from Supernatural, but his name's Jason Manns. And they flip it. So the guy plays the girl part and the girl plays the guy part. Interesting. But I love that song. It's so chill. But there's something innocent about Buddy. He, like, he didn't know. And he was just sitting in there and she was singing. And it was just one of the oh, like, he had no this, idea. It was very innocent. This was yeah. before the song was. Oh, people yeah, were like, yeah. hey, yo, yeah, like, this is not right. Not but if right. you have it, what I kind of dislike, though, is if you add it to your playlist, it's a random. Well, it's not a random guy. It's not Will Ferrell. It's Zoe Deschanel, but it's not Will Ferrell. Interesting. I didn't know that. I'd rather have the songbird of our generation be part of it. Agreed. That's right. Mixed between Fergie and Jesus. That one is. It's true. I love this movie. It's always going to be a staple. That's just how it goes. Do you have any final thoughts? I was shocked last week when we found out people thought this was overrated. Oh, my God. 
How do you not like the movie Elf? I don't know. It's weird. I get the Christmas story overrated because of the 24 hours, even though I love it. But Elf, Elf anybody who finds Elf anything but amazing, I don't, I don't understand. I'm sorry. You must find fun overrated. I mean, how can you not even like, I mean, I don't care who knows it. And they go and it's like (laughs) world's best cup of coffee. And then they ice skate and they do cute shit. Right. How many times a year do you go? Congratulations. You did it. You did it. Like nobody, nobody tells you congratulations. You did it. We're we're all slaving to the man, and nobody tells us congratulations. Or when you got a really shitty night of sleep. Oh, how'd you sleep? I got a full forty minutes. Yeah, and then like I made dinner and lunch, and it's all spaghetti, and like maple syrup. I would drink a thing of maple syrup in a heartbeat. Would I throw up? Logan yeah, would probably. Too. But yeah, it's it. Come on, this. Come on, come on. This movie's not overrated. You're overrated. Christmas isn't canceled. <laughs> just you. Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> this whole room is overrated. Yeah. No, I love this movie, man. It's it's in my top five. It as you know, you've listened to our episode. So you know and there are certain songs it. that are classic songs that you can't not think of Elf. Like you hear like dun, yeah. dun, dun, and like the Nutcracker, and you think of Buddy and his brother jumping on beds. Yeah. It's just like rocking around the Christmas tree. I think of you know Home Alone and stuff. It's just my or let it snow. I think of Bad Santa. Yeah, it's just we should do like an that. episode for Bad Santa next year. We haven't given that up that movie the full respect it deserves. Yeah, Bad Santa is going to have to be next year. We uh, we're wrapping up Christmas 2023. Next week is our 200th episode where it's going to be two parts. And part one is the best comic books of 2023 with Ken and Tom. And part two will be our top five favorite movies and TV shows. So stay tuned for that as we wrap up Christmas 2023. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope whatever it is you celebrate, it was a great one. Uh, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever it is, man. I hope you had a great, Just great New holiday. Year's. New Year. I hope your New Year's is great. Uh, I know a lot of people like to dog on the whole New Year, New Me thing, but some people legitimately use it as a benchmark to- I dog on it. I'm yeah, sorry. Well, like some people use it as a benchmark to be like, all right, this is when I'm going to start getting right. And I understand why, because the holidays are very easy to get away from you. And, you know, January 2nd. I'm back on it. There's no more holidays. I'm a little buzzed on a Wednesday. Yeah, I'm just insane. But, you know, so just enjoy the holiday season for whatever that means to you. I am in Massachusetts this week. If you're any of our listeners from that area, hit me up. I'm more than happy to meet up at a brewery. Uh, I'm going to probably see Zach. I'll be in Florida. Josh. Uh, I would love if Stacy wants to drive up a couple hours. I might get to see Riley. We'll see. Uh, I'm close to, to Stacy's mom. It's got it going on. I won't get to see a Bruins game because they're just too expensive to go to. In- I'm literally supposed to be at a Heat game right now. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. But the Heat I suck and the Magic tickets are overpriced. Exactly. See, Bruins tickets were $500 in the uppers. You know what buy. Christmas tradition I miss? Wearing my Dwayne Wade jersey on Happiness. Christmas Day. Yes, yeah. I would have said that too. Wearing my... I miss sitting at Christmas dinner and my stepmom saying, do we have to have the TV on? I'm going to be coming my dad home. and I being like, yes, I'm going to be coming home this or to Carrie's parents wearing Green Bay Packers flannel overalls, uh, a jersey. The overalls. I've Please got get yellow, a full size picture of that. I will. I'm going to do a fit check. I have the yellow vans. I've got the overalls. I've got the hat. I've so got I the saw jersey. Like it's decked. Overalls in the women's section today. So those are back. We're, we're like, they are. Overalls no, now? they are. Yeah. You can wear overalls. These ones are love gaudy. I'll send you a picture. High school. Um, yeah, I'll send you a picture. Do you see? I have not worn proper overalls since I was pregnant they're with back. Kaylee the year this movie came out. Yeah, they're back. I miss overall. This is back. Us next week. Is it Check M&M? us out. Oh. Thanks for not shady. Being with us. Cheers, everywhere. Shady's always back. Back again. Tell a friend. Until next week. We are Hopskeek News. One, two, three, four. <laughs>